But you know, maybe, just maybe, maybe we were asking for too much. We want exposed individual rationality. We want exposed budget balance. We want exposed incentive compatibility, which is dominant strategies. So maybe these are just so much stronger because we do not really need to provide incentives in dominant strategies, right? We just need to make players expected utilities above a certain level at the point at which they're making a decision. And the same with IR. As we discussed last week, sometimes exposed IR makes sense, but if you can enforce participation once the players have signed up, like I need to attract you to my course, but once you signed up, I can do pretty much anything you want with this. I can do I can do pretty much anything I want with you. I can bombard you. I cannot bombard you with homeworks because I would need to put that in the course description. But I can do horrible lectures. Uh, right. So maybe we can weaken this question and say that since the bilateral trade is such a you know basic economic question. Such a basic economic question. It's just trade, right? We want to have some trading mechanism. We want to organize a market. That's what that's what that's the only thing we do. We want to find a market. We cannot find the perfect market in which agents could potentially trade. But maybe we can find some market if we say that this is interim IR. We can try to organize a market that is ex ante budget balanced, at least. And we can weaken the dominant strategy incentive compatibility. So we need a new implementation concept. And here we introduce Bayesian incentive compatible mechanism, or Bayesian implementation. And this was the video that you watched for this lecture. How many of you watched it? Good. Non-zero amount, that's good. Uh, yeah. So that video contains all the definitions related to Bayesian implementation. What is the equilibrium concept that we use? What is the what did, what does it mean to implement a given social choice function in Bayes Nash equilibrium? What it means to be truthfully implementable. Okay, question for you. Do we still have the revelation principle, which was our first main result? Do we still have revelation principle in Bayesian implementation? Those who did not watch the video, I want to hear your opinions. Yes, we do have the revelation principle still holding there because it's really universal. If you go back there and look at the statement and the proof, if you look at the proof of uh, what we had there, it's really, there's not much pertaining to the uh, particular equilibrium concept. So we can use any equilibrium concept and we'll see that the relation principle will still hold. So we have just introduced all of the, the concept of Bayesian implementation. And now we can get back to the question of does bilateral trade admit a mechanism that is maybe not perfect but still good? So efficient, Bayesian and compatible, interim IR, and ex ante budget balance. We will begin with the same way that we started this lecture. There is a version of payoff equivalence that holds for Bayesian mechanisms. And I'm going to state it right now. Theorem payoff equivalence for Bayesian incentive compatible, that's what this abbreviation means, by the way, mechanisms. And it says that, again, for any two mechanisms that are Bayesian incentive compatible and that are direct revelation mechanisms with responding outcome functions, again, xkt, and x prime k prime t prime the following statement holds 
if the expected allocation for every player, where the expectation is taken over other players' types or reports, which the player does not know at the point where the player is making a decision. So if these expected allocations are the same in the two mechanisms, then the expected transfers will also be equal. Plus the uncertainty constant, HI. I forgot the quantifier, so if this holds for all i and theta i, then this holds for all layers i, for all types theta i, and for some collection of constants h i. And this is our way of equivalence for Bayesian mechanisms. You can see that it looks quite similar to what we had just earlier today for domain strategies and compatible mechanisms. It is on the one hand weaker because it only tells us about the expectations rather than about the exact allocations and transfers. So this requirement is weaker, but this conclusion is also weaker here than we had before. But on the other hand, this constant that we can change, this aspect of the result is stronger now because now it's really just one constant. It's just one HI for every player. It's not one constant for a given player, given profile of everybody else's types. Now it's really just one constant, one HI for every I, which does not depend on theta minus I. There are two ways we can prove this. So one way is exactly the same as we did for domain stretch and safety compatible mechanisms. You just take these expectations wherever needed, but you will do pretty much the same thing. And I want you to do that at home. So we just go through all steps of the proof we had for domain strategy mechanisms and replicate them for Bayesian mechanisms to get to this statement. On the slides, there is a different proof uh, which goes through the envelope theorem. Thank you. And that is a shorter version of the proof, but it does not give you monotonicity. This theorem obviously only works for Euclidean settings as well. So this is the statement. The statement that we had is for Euclidean setting. All right, so now we can use payoff equivalence to answer that question again for the, the weaker version of that question now. But we are going to answer it in a different way. We are not going to just, again, write out the payoffs and see what the HIs are, because we do not have the starting point. We do not have the BCG, the gross transfers, which kind of all fit and capture all of the possible transfers that we, we could have under payoff equivalence. What we will do now is we will introduce another mechanism, or a slightly different mechanism. And it is called generalized VCG mechanism. And this mechanism will have some real nice properties. The funny thing is that it itself will be actually domain strategies and compatible, just like the regular VCG. But it will also be interim IR. And it will give us the highest exanthe revenue among all Bayesian mechanisms. So there will be no Bayesian, no even Bayesian mechanism that will give us the higher exanthe revenue. So the first thing we need to do here is to define the least charitable type for a given player. So fix i. The least charitable type data. Now with tilde i is uh, given by the following expression. So it's the type that minimizes some weird expression. It's argmin over all types of layer i. So it minimizes the expectation, as usual, over other players' types of the following 
on the welfare of all players, so sum from 0 to n of vj's from the efficient allocation k star, theta i, theta minus i, theta j, minus the outside option of player i. And this expectation, again, is given theta i. So can you see what this least charitable type means? Neither can I. So it kind of it's it's the type that for whom the gap between the optimal welfare this and his outside option is the smallest. So it's yeah I I, I don't know I, I'm at a loss. I, I'm not really sure what's the intuitive meaning of this. But it will be the type for whom the IR constraint will be binding. So that's the deep meaning of it. Right. And once we have this least charitable type, we can define the transfers as follows. We have, as usual, the two sums that exclude player i. Vj of k star theta i theta minus i theta j. Now a new term, the i of k star. Oh, sorry, this was with the, with the tilde. This is the least charitable type right here. We also have uh, this last term, so not included. I mean, the, the last missing term from this sum. So this sum is actually over all players. I'll just single out player i to draw the analogies to regular BCG. So theta i tilde, theta minus i, theta i tilde, minus the Groves transfer. It is still a BCG. We're just selecting a different function h. And minus one last term, u underline i of theta tilde i. Just take a second to stare at these transfers and try to relate them to BCG. So I already told you that this third term is the Groves transfer. Theta, just theta. And so all other three will be the HI. To, to ensure that they qualify, note that neither of these three other terms actually depends on player I's report. They all use the least charitable type instead. Right. Now the first term should also be familiar. It was that Clark term. So the H that we used in the VCG transfer. The difference is this allocation is now calculated when type when player i is of least charitable type rather than completely ignoring player i. So in, in the Clark transfer, this was k star of theta minus i. But this is the same. And so these two terms are new, and they will give us individual rationality. Now, why is generalized VCG so good? Theorem about generalized VCG, part one. It will be a theorem in two parts. We will say that in a quasi linear setting, GVCG satisfies the following nice, fantastic, desirable properties. I guess, I guess I'm guess i just mixing up different things. So we've introduced GVCG transfers, and uh, the GVCG mechanism is what? So let's, let's, let's take a second to just appreciate, take a memory trip trip down the memory lane. What is a mechanism? What are the two things that should be specified in any mechanism? The guess was allocation and transfers. Not quite there. So these are 
the second thing, because allocation and transfers compose the outcome function, and that is what um, that is the second part of the mechanism. The first part of the mechanism are the action sets for every player. But yes, so since we do not, uh, since we are only looking at direct relation mechanisms, we kind of always omit that. So action sets for every player are the type spaces because they report. So, okay, fair enough. I said swing the miss. It was actually the correct answer. <laughs> so the setting, the, the mechanism is given by the K star, the efficient outcome function, and the GVCG transfer function. And so this mechanism is obviously efficient because K star is there. It is domain strategy incentive compatible because we're using Clark transfers. And it is further interim individually rational. Now we do not, we will not prove domain strategy incentive compatibility because we already did that for Clark transfers in general. We are just using that. But it's interesting to see why it would be interim IR. And I think we barely have time to do that. So let's do that, but very quickly. So let's write out the interim expected utility for player I. It'll be proof interim IR. So what we need to do in the proof is to show that the interim expected utility of any player I is about their outside option. So we want to show that a UI of theta i, theta minus i, its expectation over theta minus i is greater than u underlying i of theta i, right? So let's just write out what this expectation is. Just plug in all the structure that we have here. It will be the expectation over theta minus i of What's the utility function? V minus T. So we first have VI theta I theta minus I minus this transfer. And to think about it, I'm actually too lazy to copy all that because it takes me five minutes, five minutes to write all that. So I will just write transfer GVCG I of theta. Yeah, this expectation given beta i. And it's greater than u bar i of theta i. That's what we want to show. But thing is, if you look at these transfers, you will see that, um, that we kind of have these two terms summarizing the social welfare of all players when type i is the least charitable type right this term is with a minus but minus t together with this term this vi should have x and theta i i'm just rushing these two terms give us the sum of all players uh, real utilities when type i is actually type theta i. So you see the parallel between these two. And then we have the outside option of type theta i tilde, and we have the outside option of type theta i. So what I'm saying is that we have very parallel sets of elements. So if we take everything related to player to type theta i to the left hand side, and take everything related to type theta i tilde to the least charitable type to the right hand side, we will have an expression like well, expectations on both sides. Here we'll have sum for all players of v, j, of x, theta i, theta minus i, theta j, uh, minus the outside option u bar i theta i, and the expectation is conditional, I'm not right, even writing that. And this must be, so we want to show this inequality, we, this must be weakly greater than the same expression for the least charitable types. So, 
same for a guy equal to theta tilde i. Okay, does it click together yet? No, not really. Look at the definition of the least charitable type. It minimizes exactly this expression that we have here, there. Which means that this sum of all players' real utilities minus the outside option of player i of type theta i. This expression is the smallest for the least charitable type. It is smaller for the least charitable type theta i tilde than it is for any other type theta i. Because this is how we define this charitable type, not knowing that. And the fact that theta i tilde minimizes this expression means exactly that this inequality holds. So we have actually shown that our generalized VCG mechanism is in trim IR. Skipping many turns and cutting many corners, but we have, I would say, kind of shown this. So, and this then holds by definition of theta i tilde. I said this is a theorem in two parts. Let's state theorem GVCG part two, electric boogaloo. This will be just the same theorem, but for Euclidean setting. Because GVCG has those nice properties in a quasi-linear setting, but it has one more, the really cool one, in a Euclidean setting. So in a Euclidean setting, GVCG obviously possesses all the same properties that it had in the quasi-linear setting, because Euclidean is the same with some extra additional assumptions, but it does not contradict the quasi-linear setting. So it will still be efficient. Uh, DSIC and interim IR. But the new part is that it will be revenue maximizing and here we mean revenue for the designer, obviously, among all mechanisms that are efficient, Bayesian incentive compatible, and interim IR. So the takeaway here is if you are in a Euclidean setting, and you care about individual rationality and budget balance, then GVCG is usually the way to go. Because it gives you IR and it gives you budget balance if there is any mechanism that can give you budget balance. So if any mechanism can do it, GVCG can do it. So now we can get back to our problem and finally answer it. And I just said so. If you want an efficient Bayesian and compatible interim IR mechanism, then you want to use GVCG because it is your best chance at finding the mechanism that is exempt budget balance. And here, what I mean is expected revenue maximizing. So, exempt. So, you are too depressed to do it in class. So, do it at home and calculate the GVCG transfers for this bilateral trade problem and show that the answer to this question is still no. That there is no mechanism for the bilateral trade problem that is efficient, base incentive compatible, interim IR, and ex ante budget balance. So economics is done. We cannot organize a proper market. What are we doing here? And this result is actually known as the myerson satterthwaite theorem. So Meyerson Satterthwaite. It's a good exam question for a closed book exam to spell Mark Satterthwaite's surname <laughs> properly. So the theorem says that there is no efficient Bayesian IR 
um, let's say, ex ante budget balance mechanism for the bilateral trade problem. So this theorem is actually almost often, almost always covered in mechanism design courses. And you know, you then spend quite some time proving it. But we can prove it very quickly. So if we if we prove that you know this actually holds, we might do it next week. If we prove that this actually holds, then we know that if GVCG is not budget balanced, then nothing else is. So we can prove this theorem very trivially by just saying that GVCG is not budget balanced. We did, we should have done one proof, but it allows us to escape other proof that you kind of should know. All right, so we'll stop today. I'll stop torturing you. Uh, we'll do, we'll, we'll reassemble next week. For next week, we still have one more mechanism left for cases when you really want budget balance, but you don't maybe care that much about IR. So that mechanism will be budget balance and not in general IR. So we'll do that. And then we'll transition to talking about arbitrary social choice functions rather than just the efficient one. And uh, we'll talk about what happens if you do not have access to transfers. So we'll go back to the general model from the quasi-linear model.